The vast majority of us will make no more than a month's salary from a decade of game dev. Despite this, many people are still trying to make it, and some will succeed, making anywhere between a modest living to being a billionaire. The most common way of doing game dev is getting a job in the industry, but jobs in this space are very competitive, especially junior roles. They also typically have long hours and low compensation. From the outside looking in, the default looks like a culture of burn and churn with marginal job security. While there are many exceptions and things are apparently improving on a macro scale, it's still a tough industry to be in. This typically leaves people with the mindset of potentially having to make it on their own or with a small team. But not everyone has parents or a government who is willing to act as a safety net, nor is everyone okay with going into crippling debt to fund their game dev dream. This leads to people taking the hobby path, and this comes with its own constraints as your time is limited. Some people will save up for a couple of years to fund their dream game, others don't want to go back to a net worth of zero dollars. And this is where the concept of financial independence retire early, or FIRE, comes in. FIRE is basically being able to live off the money you have invested in order to retire. We are going to be focusing on the financial independence part rather than the retire early part since the plan is to do game dev and not retire. The most common investment within the FIRE community is typically a low cost fund that tracks the top companies in a country, region or sector. These are called index funds and they allow you to invest in hundreds of different companies while only buying a single stock. You may have heard of the S&P 500 which is the top 500 publicly traded companies in the USA. Let's say you buy a stock for $10. That stock is partial ownership of a company. So if a company makes a profit, you get paid a dividend based on how much you own of that company. If a company has 1 million stock options and you own one stock, you own 1 millionth of that company. So if a million dollars in profit is paid in dividends, that means you get $1 back in dividends. Let's say that next year it's $2 million in profit. That's $2 back in dividends. But what's more is that you can sell your ownership in that stock and because the profit doubled, people may consider your ownership over that company to be more valuable than when you bought it. So the stock you bought for $10 can now be sold for 40 since people expect $4 million in profit next year. It gets a lot more complicated than that, but basically you want the value of your assets to go up. The S&P 500 has averaged above 10% growth in the past 100 years, assuming the dividends are reinvested and this is where we get the compound interest. If you have $100 worth of stocks and get a 10% return every year, how long does it take to double the money? Well, it's not 10 years, it's actually like 7.3 years. And this is because in year 1, it's 10% of 100, which is 110. And in year 2, it's 10% of 110 which is $121. And this compounds on itself, and it really begins to spiral out of control. So after 10 years, you would have $259. After 20 years, you would have $673. And after 40, you would have $4,526. So how does this all relate to fire? Well, a study from a while ago, which still holds up reasonably well, suggests that if you have 25 times your total yearly expenditure in a mix of stocks and bonds, and you only liquidate 4% of those assets every year, you have a 95% chance of never running out of money. This is taking inflation into account and not including any additional income. And that's the basis of FIRE. If you can happily live off 40k a year, your goal would be $1 million, invested. They call this the 4% rule, and it actually kind of holds up reasonably well. Now, being able to save 25 times your living expenses is a pretty big task, and for most people, it's not reachable within a reasonable time span. Let's say you earn $70,000 after tax and spend 40 k a year, leaving you with $30,000 in savings. Invested at a historic 10% average rate of return, that would take you 16 years to reach the 4% rule, assuming that your income and expenditure kept up with inflation. If the rate of return is a more conservative 7%, you're looking at 18 years of saving. Now, this is going to obviously be too much for the majority of the population, but there are lesser forms of fire that can still be achieved. Coast fire is about saving enough to where compound interest will naturally let you reach the 4% rule, and you only have to bother earning enough to where you can cover your living expenses. 
In our earlier example, it would take 7 years to save up 250000 and if you decided to then swap to part-time work and only cover about 40 k worth of expenses every year, it would then take 15 years of coast fire at a 10% rate of return to reach the 4% rule. For game dev, this means after 7 years of full-time work, you could go down to 2 days a week of work with 5 days off for game dev. And after 15 years of that, you could go full-time game dev, assuming historic averages. Barista Fire works by withdrawing a little bit from your investment portfolio, but also working a little bit to supplement your income. Let's say our previous person took 10 years to save and invest 480000 if they then only earned 20,000 and had to liquidate 20,000 from their portfolio every year, after 11 years they would reach the 4% rule. For game dev, this would mean that after 10 years, you could go down to 1 day of work a week and get 6 days off for game dev. After 11 years of that, you could go on to full time game dev. So you have a couple of options on how you can approach fire. But I think it's pretty clear that even with this, FIRE is not for everyone and there are valid criticisms towards FIRE. If you cannot earn a reasonably high wage, you will most likely never be able to reach FIRE within a reasonable time span. If you're naturally a bit more of a consumerist and like spending money, aka being normal, I don't think that forcing yourself to save is going to make you happy outside of eliminating financial stress. And if you have dependents, then I strongly suggest that you consider their situation before pursuing fire. The other important thing to keep in mind is that the 10% historic average is an average, and I would not go into this thinking you are going to get 10% every year, or even 10% on average. Expect a couple of years where you lose 20 to 30% of your net worth, and don't be too sad if you only manage to get 7% returns over the next 20 years. The stock market can be absolutely volatile within a short period of a decade or two. If you could predict what the market is going to do, you'd be a billionaire. The rest of us have to roll with the punches with the bet that the market is going to continue to grow over the next many decades. The FIRE lifestyle is certainly not for everyone and it should never be done at major sacrifice to your happiness. Also, keep in mind that all the math assumes that you spend and make zero dollars on your game dev projects. You should still be trying to make games while it's still a hobby, and you never really know what's going to happen. Maybe you make something that gets a lot of attention and has the potential to launch your career, with your savings letting you more easily take the risk. Maybe you make a couple of games that flop initially, but randomly get attention because a variety streamer tried it. You don't really know what's going to happen, but FIRE does provide a fairly likely but slow and difficult endpoint to actually being able to do game dev full time. If you are interested in FIRE, then there are many other channels that explain this concept better. Just keep in mind that personal finance is very personal, and you should never blindly follow what other people are doing without considering your own circumstances. If you're interested in what I'm doing in game dev, then subscribe to this channel and check out Platform Gun on Steam or itch.io. It's a free puzzle platformer where you have a gun that shoots platforms. Link in the description.